Hello everyone, welcome again to another uh, rendition of um, Radical for the Truth. We thank God for you and we, we appreciate the fact that you uh, are joining in with us. We're still on our discussion this week of the homosexual heresy. Today again with me I have the esteemed pastor Bishop Jeffrey Charles Jackson of Way of Life Ministries. How are things going at the church, Pastor? Excellent, excellent. Good, and, uh, and we're New Praise Ministries, and Pastor Roscoe Heath with New Praise Ministries. Drop us a line at T, as in Tom, B as in Boy, Truth, at yahoo.com, and let us know your feelings on the discussion, and if you're being enriched and edified, or if you're being outraged and angered, uh, let's talk about it. We want to hear from you. Also, our telephone number is area code 216 seven three one eight nine seven nine and you can reach me there if you have anything you want to talk about or for prayer or any other thing regarding pastor jeff's ministry or my ministry we'll be glad to entertain all those questions so pastor i want to get down to i want to read you something okay and then i'm going to let you talk a little bit um, i was getting i was looking up some information on this issue where the churches are standing uh, with respect to homosexuality, and I have a bunch of churches that, that listed themselves as accepting uh, homosexuality as a lifestyle that is acceptable by God and by Scripture. Mm -hmm. And also, um, let me just read this. This is the Evangel Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Uh, and it says this, in the Ev Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's recommendation on ministry policies, April 2009. We find the following in the ELCA Church Council to the 2009 Churchwide Assembly. Listen to this, folks. Resolution 1, resolved that the ELCA commit itself to finding ways to allow congregations that choose to do so to recognize, support, and hold publicly accountable lifelong monogamous same-gender relationships. Mm. Number 2, Resolution 2. Resolved that the ELCA commit itself to finding a way for people in such publicly accountable, lifelong, monogamous, same-gender relationships to serve as rostered leaders of this church. Resolution number three. Resolved that in the implementation of these resolutions, the ELCA commit itself to bear one another's burdens, love the neighbor, and respect the bound of consciousness of all. Resolved that the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America make provisions in its policies to eliminate the prohibition of rostered service by members who are in public, accountable, long, lifelong, monogamous, same-gender relationships. Wow. So, let me ask this question. Sure. Based on the findings of what we see that people have literally just written uh, with their own consciousness, not a God consciousness, but self consciousness. <laughs> That's the issue. So, <laughs> right here in the resolution. So, so now, I guess people are supposed to hang their soul and their spirit on what uh, tradition of a of a church or or organization, if you will. I wouldn't even call it a church. I would call it an organization because the church represents Jesus Christ's sacrifice, you know, the love of Jesus Christ, the purity, the holiness, the, the pureness of, of who he is and the essence of what he is. And an organization is going to do everything it can to go against it. A religious organization, here's the thing that's outrageous, okay, is that the, 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 the Lutheran church has the same responsibilities that you and I to preach the gospel to teach the entire counsel of God and to maintain that order all right in a manner that would be acceptable in his sight okay what I desire for people and what I believe should be is immaterial absolutely okay what what is relevant is what does God say the Lutheran Church the evangelical Lutheran Church of America cares nothing about what the Word of God says. And I'm going to tell you something, Pastor. This is what Isaiah was talking about, what the Lord said through Isaiah. He says, the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they who are led of them are destroyed. Mm. Our problem, it goes back to what we were talking about last week. It begins and ends in the pulpit. In the pulpit. That's the most important part, because the Bible says, how can one hear without a preacher? Without a preacher. And how can he preach unless he's sent? Ah, and, there it is. There see, it that's is. the whole key to right. it. Is this person sent to deliver 
the gospel of Jesus Christ to your life. Now, notice this. There's a difference between religion and the gospel. Mm -hmm. People like to serve religion, and they get into this religious traditions and religiosity, if you will, but they don't get into the gospel. What is the gospel but Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection? That's just cut and dry. If we don't get to know him and the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection, we don't know Jesus because we have to know why he suffered and we have to know why he resurrected in order that we may live. Well, let me ask you something, Pastor. One of the charges against... Um people like us who maintain and adopt the position, the scriptural position, is that why would God not embrace homosexuality? Hmm. A loving God. A loving God. Okay, they not, say if he's a loving God, then he should Then he should embrace. accept me in this condition. Especially since I was born this way. Right. All right. See, and let me just say this, because <laughs> I ran into some people, and, and let me tell you, by the compassion of my heart, Jesus said this, and he said it so emphatically. He had compassion on the people. Yes. And, and this is what real truth does. Real truth comes to you and says, I have compassion for your sinful condition to bring you out of this state, to bring you into a loving state. Mm -hmm. Now, that loving state brings us into a righteousness with God, brings us into a holiness with him so that we can be accepted of him. And notice what happens. The Bible says that God does not look on sin. Mm -hmm. And so that means that if he's not looking on sin and that we're operating in sin and we're in practicing sin, that means God is not looking on us because his soul takes no pleasure mm -hmm. in the wicked. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at this. I ran into some people. And just give me just two minutes right quick because this is something that's very important. I want to begin to talk to you, too, for those of you who say that I was born this way. Now, truth of the matter was is that you are born this way because we're all born into a world of sin. <laughs> and, and that means that the Bible says a man is born of a woman is a few days old and full of trouble. That means that if you came by the way of a woman, unless you was immaculate conception, if you was immaculate conception, that means you were born without sin. But now because you were born of a woman, you were born into a world of sin. So that means, yes, we understand that you were born this way. But the truth of the matter is that God sees us and he knows that we were born this way, but he never wanted us to stay this way. That's why he said he wished that no man would perish. That means that we die spiritually. We're all going to die physically, but he does not want us to die spiritually. So how does he do, how does he do this? His love covers a multitude of sins. Mm. And whether we recognize it or not, you are in sin. So I, I ran into a couple of people that were actually engaged into homosexuality. And they said, well, you're a pastor. We just want to know how you feel about us. Now, immediately, I didn't have to come with a judgment or I didn't have to come with, with, with a downcast spirit and just, you know, beat you up. No, what I did come to do was just present the truth. Not my words, but God's words. Mm -hmm. Not what you may have heard about what God is accepting or ain't accepting, but what does the word of God say physically? Mm -hmm. And so I began to pull the Bible out and show them literally what scripture means. Now, here's the problem that people are having. We make excuses because we don't know the word of God. And here's my whole hinge to them. How can you say that you love God or you or you know the love of God, but yet you don't know the word of God? Mm. You can't know his love until you begin to express what it means to know his word. Jesus right. said, take and learn from me mm -hmm. for I come in the volume of the book. Now we can get a better understanding, not from what we feel, mm -hmm. not from our emotions, but what's right according to the spirit and how God reveals himself from heaven, right here in the earthly realm, as a natural and a special revelation to those mm -hmm. whom he loved. And he loved all of us. He loves all of us mm -hmm. enough that he gave his only begotten son, that we may now, if we believe in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So my thing to them was is that you say that how can a loving God put you in hell? No, God is not just, just, just looking to say, here, I, I don't like what you're doing. Is that whatever? I'm just going to throw you in it. No, God gives us a free choice to make a decision in our life, to know right from wrong and to know his truth from a lie. Well, God is speaking to you now. I mean, the, the, I mean, the fact that anytime time uh, the word of God is being spoken, this, 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 these individuals that met you the other day that you spoke with, if you gave them the word of God, that's God giving them an opportunity to not incur that judgment. Right. Okay, how can God send me to hell? How can God be righteous and holy and not send the wicked to hell? That's what the real question is. Not how can God, who is, who is loving, 
sending me to hell. That, okay, be, because God is righteous, that does not preclude his love. So, so listen to this. So they say, well, oh, because, well, because we make a sin and we, and we just did some things wrong in life and we chose the wrong things, that just means that we're automatically just doomed and destined for hell. Yeah, if that's your practice, and that's the whole key to it. If you practice sin, the Bible says you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here's one of the things that I, I wanted them to understand is that, let's take, for instance, how if you say that God is not justified in this situation. Okay, so I use this example. I said, you know, because I'm a good person, you know, that's what they say. I'm a good person, you know, and, and just By because. standard. Right, and see, that's another thing. So <laughs> I'm sitting there saying, well, okay, you're a good standard? person, you're a nice person, you do this, do that, but yet you're caught up in homosexuality, uh, an abominable sin to God. And I know that some people say, well, all sin is sin, but God has placed a specific point that this is abominable and, and, and detestable to him. But now, this is his words, not ours. So here's one of the things that I use as an example. Okay, I'm a good person. So here, let's see how God judged rightly. Now, if I go to the criminal system right now, and I broke in your house, breaking and entering, and I, I went upstairs and I raped your mother, and in the process of raping her, I murdered her. Now, just because I'm a good guy, should I get off? No. No, the justice system says, according to what's written, is that the law says is that if I commit murder, if I rape somebody, if I break into entry, there's a consequence to the sin that I'm, that I'm created or, or committed, and now I have to face the consequences. So would it be right for me to get off just because I'm a good guy and I'm only just committing this one little small sin? Well, look at the lives that I affected and look at the law that I broke. So what's the purpose of having a law if, if, if there's no consequences behind it? And this is what's happening with God's word. Listen to this. Amen. Uh, this passage in John, it just uh, the third chapter, this came to me while you were talking about people and their view of being condemned. Hmm. Okay. Um, Jesus, this is Jesus talking to Nicodemus here. In the 18th verse, it says, Jesus says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Okay? Now, in terms of condemnation, Pastor, the fact of the matter is when we come into this world, we come in already condemned. condemned. We're already condemned, and and we can see the res we can see the consequences of that condemnation uh, or the power of that condemnation through our lusts, you know, through the lustful activities of our flesh, uh, the lust of the eye, the lust of uh, the flesh, and the pride of life. All of these things, which are contrary to the Father, but the world embraces and Absolutely. loves. So we're already condemned. the 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 object of Jesus Christ is to deliver us. From condemnation. That's why it says in Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit in, in the King James Version. Right. And so how do we get to this point, though? It takes us to be real with the word of God. Well, that's the thing. First of all, the lying preachers need to repent. Absolutely. Okay. The these churches that are saying that homosexuality is an acceptable lifestyle to God, and that they're capitulating to the culture that we live in. They're they're submitting themselves rather than being a light, rather than standing up and saying, "No, the truth of God is this," and we must conform to the truth of God. They're continually keeping people in a mode of a lifestyle of condemnation. Absolutely. And yet they're religious. Listen, Pastor, you can be religious and go to hell. Come on, let's be real. Okay? And, and that's what I'm trying to do here. You can be religious, <laughs> okay? And, and, and still be an abomination to God. All right, you could you could raise up hands, and they they're on holy hands, and God counts them as an abomination. In the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, God even told the people, "Your prayers are an abomination to me." And He wasn't talking to 
uh, heathens. He was talking to his own people who had rejected his precepts, his law, and his word. And, and you know what's amazing? Because Jesus always resorted back to Isaiah the prophet, yeah, he and he says, he says the people say that they that they love me, but yet he says, you know, they they love me in their heart. He says, yes, I know your heart because I hear so many people say, well, God knows my heart. He says, yes, your lips speak of me, mm -hmm. but your heart is far, far removed from, from me. Yeah. Now that was amazing because when I when I looked in the scripture. Uh, just talking to these people, I began to realize that the word of God wanted to say something to the people. Mm -hmm. and, I, and one thing we have to understand, God is holy. Yes. You know, okay, we can't change that. His holiness is righteousness. His righteousness is his love. And his love, watch this, his love is his power. Mm -hmm. And so that means that now we have to understand something. We have to look at the word of God in Romans chapter 3. Uh, verse 5, it says, but if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, mm -hmm. what shall we say? Yeah. Is God un unjust who afflicts wrath? Mm -hmm. I speak as a man. Now, notice this. He, Paul is speaking as a man right now. He says, I speak as a man. So he's asking a good question. So he's saying, he's, he says, now, is God unjust who afflicts wrath? Mm -hmm. God is not unjust who, who inflicts wrath because he the one who sets up whatever he wanted to establish mm -hmm. in his world. This is not your world. This is God's world. Yes, and until we get to understand that, that you know, he, God understands what's wrong with the world. The world has a sickness. Mm -hmm. The world has a spirit that, that's over it. And it's not the Holy Spirit. It's a spirit that's operating in multiple spirits and it's causing the people to perish. No. And that's not God's will. No. God's will for man is to bring them back into reconciliation with him. So I tell the person, listen, it's, 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 it's God's purpose for you mm -hmm. to, to no longer hang on your own understanding. That's why the Bible says lean not unto your mm -hmm. own understanding, but lean unto him who can direct your way. So mm -hmm. now we have to understand this. We, we can hinge our, our whole life and salvation based on what we believe from a man mm -hmm. who is not attached to God, who is not in a covenant with God, who has, no, who has no character of God, and we can lose our very soul and our spirit when we take this last breath. So now here's mm -hmm. the most important part. So it says, he says, certainly not. Mm -hmm. Now notice the words certainly that he not. used, certainly not. For then how will God judge the world? For if the truth of God is, has increased through my life, he says to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? Mm -hmm. So in other words, that means that the preacher must understand, even as Paul understands, if I'm telling a lie, how can God get glory when he hates the lie? Right, right. Let me give you another scripture too, just in line with what you're talking about. And this um, is in response to those people who says, well, I don't believe what that the Bible teaches that, or I don't believe the Bible's position on that. Hmm. I believe my conscience. I follow wow. my own conscience. I follow what I believe. Romans 3 and 3, because you're in Romans, and, and I'm going to give you a chance to get back to that. In Romans 3 and 3, it says, for, Paul says, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Same terminology. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. Okay? In other words, it doesn't matter what these people say and, and how they contradict the Scripture. The Bible is the word of God. And here he says, let God be true. And every man, I don't care if he is standing in the pulpit with a collar turned around backwards. Right. And I don't care how many degrees he has. If he is not speaking what this word is speaking, he is a liar. All day long. So you know what's amazing? It's because now I had this question presented to me. Okay, well, what do you say to a person who was born... And, and they just naturally, I mean, from the time that they were born, they were just naturally attracted to another man mm -hmm. or, uh, or another woman was naturally just attracted to, a, uh, you know, another woman. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you minister to them then, Pastor? How do you, how do you show them that, that they, can, they can change and be transformed or, you know, uh, that they can come out of this lifestyle when yet this is what they feel. This is their emotions. This is what, this is what they know best. And that's the problem. The, 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 so what do I say to them? I tell them literally what the word of God says is that God's word wants to transform your mind and your spirit, renewing you a right heart. Because there's something affected 
It, or, or or is there something wrong with your heart? It, it has a disease. It is it is an infected by a, a disease that's causing you to to not live but to die. So then, this is one of the things that I said according to the Word of God. So I said, well, in, in uh, Romans three ten, the Bible says. For it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, and there is none who understands. Mm. So that means that we don't understand, and that's why we have to get to understand it, but we have to get it from the pulpit. We have to get it from the word of God. And if we compromise it, people will still continue to walk in, in, in an understanding that they have not. They'll have eyes to see, but they see not, ears to hear, but they hear not. And this is why we can't receive or perceive what God is saying to us. So then I did this. I said, so there is none who seeks after God. So here's my position. What do you say to a person in that manner? Seek after God. Don't look to seek after a man, but seek after God. You can recognize in the man that God is there by the word that he speaks out of his mouth. Amen. Amen. With that note, our time is already up. This is just too quick. The time goes by so fast. And we're glad that you um, joined us today. Uh, can you come back next week? Absolutely. Can we do this another week? Absolutely. Uh, because there's so much to be said about this issue. Um, the thing that I'll leave with you pastors is repent. Repent. It's time for you to repent. Stand up for the word of God because one day you're going to stand in judgment. Okay? This is Pastor Roscoe Heath for Pastor Jeffrey Charles Jackson. We're signing off and we look forward to seeing you next week. We love you very much. God bless. Be